high school, I've learned how to do so many different things. From US history, to calculus, to chemistry. I've learned quite a bit over the past year. But in spite of all that, I've been unable to answer this one question since the beginning of high school. What do you want to do with your life? And that's because there are seemingly two different answers to the question. First, you have the optimists like myself, who say you should always be pursuing your passion no matter what. And then there's my family, who essentially believe that college should be a cost-effective four-year investment that pays off for the rest of your life. But despite our struggles over what I was going to do, I have to admit that, in a way, they're right. See, what I failed to realize is that my family was simply being realistic for my well-being. A problem that several of us face today is that we often tend to equate realism with cynicism and pessimism when that couldn't be further from the truth. As lofty as our goals and dreams may be, having a sense of realism is one of the most vital qualities needed to achieve. Now, as a high school senior, being realistic about most things isn't one of my strengths. The reason why we have such difficulty accepting realism is because we're human. When it comes to things like college or what to do with your job, we often have a habit of overestimating our chances of succeeding, which is something psychologists like to call optimism bias. In her Time Magazine article from 2011, Tolly Sherrod explains that we expect things to turn out better than they wind up being. And while optimism allows us to be motivated and inspired during difficult times, we shouldn't allow that to manipulate us into making decisions that we know aren't in our favor. But unfortunately, we do this all the time. When we see that nine Americans die in a car accident every day that involves a smartphone or texting, we think, oh, that won't be me. But when we have a 1 in a 292 million chance of winning the lottery, suddenly everything changes to, hey, you never know. <laughs> but naturally, this kind of thinking isn't very useful when it comes to something as difficult as finding a job. Assuming that the job market will be just fine for that anthropology degree isn't the wisest decision. But yes, money can't buy everything. But you know what money can buy? Food. And clothes. And <laughs> you see, as important as it is to be doing what you love and pursuing your dreams, remember that some of the less extravagant things, like having a sustainable income, are just as important. But of course, money isn't everything, and it's not everyone's first priority. But whatever that goal of yours is, optimism is definitely required. But we should be careful with what we do with it. In 2010, a group of students from New York University announced Diaspora, a social networking website designed to give users complete control of their private information. The project raised over $200,000 on Kickstarter, and everyone from the community to the press thought that Diaspora had the potential to end Facebook's rank. And much of the praise was directed towards one of the company's co-founders, Ilya Zilomersky. And everyone who saw Ilya said that he was a bright and eternal optimist who constantly had new ideas for the world. But after Diaspora's initial press, though, the company went under hard times. See, after the preview code was released, Diaspora was criticized for having textbook security and privacy vulnerabilities. And Ilya and the rest of the co-founders depleted the $200,000 on further development and had to ask their followers for more donations. Development dragged on, and with the announcement of Google+, many wrote off Diaspora as irrelevant. And here the immense pressure from creating a startup became apparent. In November of 2011, Ilya, who had battled depression for several years, committed suicide at the age of 22. See, optimism, like Ilya's, is something that we admire and credit for success. But many of us don't know what to do when just being optimistic doesn't get us where we want to be. Being optimistic is a good thing, but too much of it can lead to us having astronomical and unrealistic expectations of ourselves. In his medical study, Dr. Michael Freeman from UC San Francisco found a correlation between entrepreneurship and mental health issues. See, entrepreneurs are under tremendous amounts of pressure from the community and themselves in order to succeed. And when they're faced with failure, it's devastating. 
Sure, with startups, you could be the next Bill Gates, Steve Jobs, or Mark Zuckerberg. But you could just as easily be the next Ilya Zidomirsky. Now, I'm not saying that our dreams and passions are dangerous and should just be thrown away without a second thought. But as big and amazing as our dreams can be, how we approach those dreams has to be realistic. When making that first step towards achieving any goal, we should go in knowing that not everything is going to go the way it was envisioned. Success is not a concrete formula of hard work and determination. Sometimes things are just beyond our control. And remember that while we're supporting our dreams, we have to support ourselves as well. Even if that just means having a steady income. Being realistic is simply acknowledging the fact that sometimes things don't go according to plan. Instead of pushing away and suppressing everything that could go wrong, we really should be embracing and preparing ourselves for that instead. And if getting to where you want to be is taking longer than you expected, remember that there's more to life than just living your dream. While waiting for that perfect opportunity, remember to spend time with your friends and family and do things that you love. If anything, a dream is just one of several things that can make you happy. So don't forget everything else. As high school seniors like myself have to make this decision every year of what to do with our lives. We can't just rush into the fray thinking we'll get where we want to be in a flash. We have to test the waters and get a grip of what the world is like. I think I understood what my family meant when I asked, Mom, why do you want me to be an engineer? To which my mother responded, Philip, you don't have to be an engineer. You could be a doctor or a lawyer. <laughs> okay, well, perhaps that one's a bit much. So, back to the age-old question. What do you want to do with your life? I think I know. But it's not a question of what. It's a question of when. Maybe it will happen in 10 years. Or maybe in 20. Or maybe not. As long as I, and as long as we are prepared for what the world has in store for us, we should be fine. And that's more than enough reason to be happy. Thank you.